This meeting is being recorded by committee chairs. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. And I don't see anyone trying to get my attention. Um, the purpose of this meeting is to prepare agendas for subcommittees for council consideration. No discussion or comments will be entertained unless requested, sorry, unless requested upon by the committee chairs. All right, um, can I get a roll call? Uh, yeah, roll call. Count, uh, President Gilmore. Here. Councillor Gwynn. Here. Councillor Disorder. Here. Councillor Elmer. Here. Councillor Forgy. Here. And Councillor Rickett. Here. Madam President, you have a quorum. Thank you. All right, under President's notes, the first thing I have is the status with documentation on sidewalk ordinance enforcement. Uh, Councillor DeSorger, I know you had that. That's not ready for prime time yet, right? Okay, we'll keep that under President's notes. Um, in person versus hybrid subcommittee meetings for council and training of hybrid meetings by committee chairs. Yes, okay. Um, I feel like this is working with, you know, council meetings being in person and subcommittees being remote. But if others feel like it's time to return to fully in-person meetings, I'm happy to talk about it. No, I, I think yeah. this is fine. Yep. I think it's I think it's going well. Okay. It'll be winter before we know it. So yep. yes, Kathy. Um, so just to let you know, the bill to extend the remote meeting still expires on July 15th. Um, just today, shortly before five o'clock, we got an email that the Senate has passed an extension, but it still needs to go through the House and the governor. So it's slowly inching its way, but there is no extension currently. So we may have a period of time that it has to go back in person. Uh, depending on where subcommittees land. All right. Right. So it's like the only one where that would be a concern would be CRE. So yeah. CRE might have to be in person. And then if they don't extend it, then obviously next month we're back to, you know, quote unquote normal. Right. Well, that right. would also apply to ways and means. Ways and means? Because yeah. we're on the, uh, we're on the oh, 19th. Oh, the 19th. Okay, you're right. Yep. yep. So that's, okay. that's fine. We'll, we'll do whatever needs to be done. Yep, no problem. That's good. Thank you, Kathy, for the update. Thank you. All right. Okay. Having trouble believing it's July already. Okay. All right. Oh, well, we can get through this meeting quickly. Yeah. Yep. All right. So speaking of hybrid meetings, um, the next one, uh, Kathy, I'm going to go ahead and open this up to you because you can explain it better than I can. So when the council is in person at John's on and we're also doing the hybrid, um, allowing people into meetings, keeping an eye on members of the public who would like to make public comment if the audio is working correctly. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm missing things because I'm looking at the screen and I'm looking at my notes and I'm trying to, so I just, I feel like I need a little bit of help so that I don't miss things. Um, and I, I don't really know what to suggest other than uh, giving, you know, giving someone who would be willing to pay attention to those members who need to be led into meetings or, um, you know, we, I don't really know what to suggest. It's, it's going to be kind of a a bumpy road until we get smooth sailing, just like any other transition that we've had. Um, there's a, I can work off my laptop, which I can become the host on my laptop, which is fine. And there's an Apple pad. I don't know much about Apple, sorry. Um, that can be handed to someone else and they can, you know, assist. But I think it's just going to be a little bit of trial and error if a counselor is 
assisting, you know, that means they would also have to split their attention. Right. So does anyone? Okay, I saw three hands go up. Okay, I saw Chris and Jenny at the same time. So you two are going <laughs> to have to toss a coin. Jenny, go ahead. Um, so I read a little bit about this and um, there are other entities that when they have these meetings, they have they do have a person, just like you said, Kathy, at the last chairs meeting, they have someone called the remote cheerleader um, or the remote captain. And because it's too much for one person to do. And so I suggested we could either take turns, you know, amongst the counselors because it does distract you from doing that job or, or um, so that each person had a turn to do it because you do have to pay attention, but you would be in charge of managing that. I, I would imagine you should probably sit over that side, but <clears throat> I, I thought maybe by rotating, it would be a little fairer because it, it is hard to pay attention while doing that. That's all. Chris, what were your thoughts? Um, I thought we sort of hit on this a little bit uh, at last month's cha chairs, or maybe it was another meeting we were talking about it. Um, I wondered why um, it wouldn't be appropriate to have Tammy as the um, remote person. Uh, the issue would be overtime for, for Tammy, but um, I vaguely remember Danny and the mayor saying that that could be, um, that could be worked around. And so it sounded to me like they would be willing to make funds available for the overtime in uh, the council budget so that Tammy seems to be the logical person that could assist at that particular point. Um, it would really be up to Kathy. Perhaps there's another person that's better suited in the office, but I'm not in favor of, if you ask me to do something with the computer, I'm, I'm dead in the water. I'm done. I just can't take that responsibility. So I would like to see us have another person uh, that would receive, you know, that would receive payment for uh, the added responsibility. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Phil. I'd be happy to do it for free. Okay. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm, and I'm familiar with the uh, iPad. So if, yeah. if you can give me co-chair responsibilities, which I guess I would need, uh, I'd be happy to, we can talk about it, Kathy, but I think we can do it. Okay, so just to let everyone know, um, this July meeting, I will not be in attendance. Tammy will be doing the meeting. I'm going to be at, at school, um, clerk school in, in New Hampshire. Um, so, you know, as much as I can help before the meeting, we can try to line a few things up and, and um, Tammy will be at the meeting in July. Um, so will the parliamentarian, so you'll be in very good hands. Okay. Okay. So since Tammy is going to be at the meeting with us filling in for you, it seems like she would have the same problem that you're reporting. So let's try, let's try it with Phil. And yeah. if it gets to be too much, um, yeah. Penny. Yep. Yeah, um, thank you so much, Phil, for stepping up and stepping out. And if you have a lot on an agenda that particular night, I'll be your backup whenever you're chairing, you know, because if you have to really do a lot of discussion through EDC, I'll help you out. I'll be your backup. Terrific. Thank, thank you thank so you. much, Penny. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So I'm also thinking that if you do get distracted during a really crucial part of the debate, just don't be shy about asking people to repeat themselves and we'll just make sure. And if anyone gives you any fuss over it, I'll let them know you're doing double duty. Okay, so, all right, so that's good for this month. And then, okay, emergency meeting to discuss policing in Greenfield. I think we can skip over that for now. Okay. Um, unless, it, I don't know if there's been any new development. I haven't heard anything new. 
Um, is there, I'm not seeing anyone trying to get my attention. Okay, we can go ahead and skip over that. I know that um, a few of us are going to be meeting with uh, the mayor tomorrow um, to talk about some changes. And we'll know more after that. So maybe I'll just leave that there as a placeholder and move on. Okay, thank you. Okay. And thanks for meeting. And oh, no also problem. just point of order. Um, I, I think we should all double check those of us that were invited to go. I think we should double check um, because I'm trying to confirm that meeting uh, with the mayor and she said something to me today about it being canceled. So we might want to try to double check that meeting. Okay, um, I'll send an email and hopefully I get a response in the morning. I got an update that the meeting had been changed. So it looks like it was scheduled for today at one by mistake. So I got a, a time change for tomorrow at one. Okay, thank you. I did not get that, but thank you. I'll forward that to you. And I will also double check to make sure because I don't want to waste anybody's time. I got you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. So next, um, Councillor Bottomley had to resign as the chair of CRE. Um, he had a uh, family emergency come up. And also he's been traveling a lot for work recently. And I think between the two, he doesn't feel like he can uh, hold this down. But Councillor Ricketts, now Chair Ricketts has graciously accepted, which is good because uh, we've got a lot of new folks on that committee. So now we've got a new uh, chair for CRE. So thank you, Penny. You're welcome. Um, John is gonna stay on CRE as a member. So Good. we don't have a vacancy. That's great. Um, and he's going to do his best to attend, but he needs to keep his head, you know, and his, his mind with his family yep. right now. So. Been there. All right. Speaking, yeah. yeah. And speaking of Councillor Ricketts, she is also being reappointed to the GBA. I don't think there are going to be any, um, unless anyone has any objections, I don't, I don't, I don't know if there are any people more qualified than Penny for that. Um, okay, transfer and authorized sale of city owned land located on Summer Street. I think that one's just going to go straight to EDC. Does that sound good? <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Uh, procedure re regarding technology issues before and during hybrid me meetings submitted by Councilor Vasorio. Okay, so this one's going to be tricky. Um, at the last meeting, we had two counselors who had to participate remotely and a number of folks from the public, they could all hear each other, but they could not hear us. And I know because I was sitting next to Kathy, I could see the subtitles at the bottom of the screen and I could see what they were saying, but there was no audio in the John Zahn Center. Um, we tried numerous times to no avail. I don't know that IT could have done anything else. I don't know what was going on that night because it's worked in the past. Um, but counselors should be able to participate. So it would be good to have some sort of a protocol. And I know set, so canceling the meeting and sending out a new Zoom link is a problem because it, cre it creates a brand new link that's different from what's posted. And all of our postings have to, you know, we have 48 hours advance notice to the public. So it would be unfair to change the meeting because if there's someone who's going to eat dinner and join us late, obviously they're going to go to a dead link. Um, so if anyone has any suggestions on how we might work around that in the future, Councilor Sorger. Um, you're not reposting, you're not posting the meeting again. Um, many times a different link has been sent out because a link wasn't working. That's happened to us at chairs and other subcommittees um, that a new link had to be sent out. And I think, I, I was thinking about this afterwards where we could see people with their mouths moving. If you were mute, there would have to be an accommodation that was made. So 
I think that we need to handle that. And I, I was looking at this with other, other what other cities had done. So um, I would sit, and I talked to my sister who also spends half of her life doing these meetings via Zoom. Um, they go up to 20 minutes and then they send something else out. But if, if everybody can't participate, that includes the public too, because none of the public could participate at that. And it, it would have to be something that everybody agreed on. I think we should all agree. But um, I remember Kathy sending out uh, another link for something that, because the link wasn't working. So we got another one. But that isn't a new meeting. And I think everybody has a right to work. And there are some glitches with the Zoom thing. That's all. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Ka Kathy, did you put your hand up? Oh, I did. I was just. You know, if, if Ginny has um, suggestions or something like that, like send them to us. So right. when when we were when we were in the meeting, specifically talking about the council meeting, um, IT was there. IT couldn't figure out what was going on. If, if this is what I was told, and I am not as knowledgeable as anybody else on, on these meetings. If we were to break the link that we had provided and posted on our agenda and provide a new link, so we're, we're not using the posted link anymore. So that would have invalidated the, that portion of the meeting. Um, but if, if anyone has, like if your sister, Ginny, that you said is, they're on meetings all the time, Put her, put her in contact with me to find out what procedure they use. Are, is your sister working for a municipality? Is it running under open meeting law? You know, there, there are more things that need to be considered rather than just um, creating a new link. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I need the substance of it is, is, how is how are other municipalities doing it if something goes awry on the spot? Okay, Follow I saw Penny and right. then Dan. Oh yeah, go ahead. And then I had Penny um, and then Dan. So Kathy, I okay. certainly don't. So um, yeah, so um, I'm thinking right now, this is more of an IT thing. So let's not um, spend all the time in chairs going over this. Let Kathy, it's a good idea to get in touch with you. People who have ideas to get them directly <laughs> to you and get them to IT. None of us can solve this. We can't solve it right now. So let's not take up all this time with something that it's this difficult. I mean, the hard part was at least you could read like everything, you know, Council Bottomley said last time, but it still wasn't great because they still couldn't hear us. We're not going to be able to solve it. So um, Madam Clerk and IT needs suggestions to go directly to them so they can fix it we're just going to be wasting air right now. So let's let's put it where it belongs and take it off this table. Well, Jenny, you had a follow-up question. No, I was just a follow-up statement. I said, we actually have done that before, Kathy. We've sent out another link. We've done it for, um, for ways and means, but at any rate, I can speak to you, but I did put it on the chair's agenda because it, it's something that I think we should talk about before that meeting. What I, I, I didn't want to diss the discussion on it because I think it's an, important, it's an important item and we could get to the next meeting and have an issue. Um, and so that's problematic. Also, I, there's a $7,000 stipend for IT for, for um, for um, overtime, I'm hoping that maybe they'll come to this meeting again too. So in case we had a similar problem because we have counselors that couldn't vote and people that couldn't speak. So I think it does need to be talked about in a timely ma manner. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dan, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just, I, I think the point we're kind of missing and I don't wanna to take too much time um, is that when we were using WebEx, WebEx allows additional access. You're just sending an access piece. I believe Zoom is reformatting. So when you when you send out this new link, they can't get into the original link. It, it supersedes, it replaces. It's not additional. 
An additional link lets people come back in into the same meeting. With that Zoom format, it appears that once you create a new link, it, it is the only link. You would have to send everybody that new link that's not in. It gets rid of the old link. So it's a little bit different. And that's, I think, where we were breaking down. Okay, Phil? Um, a, has it worked in John's on? I don't remember it ever working in John's on. I thought that was the first try and it didn't work. It has worked in the little city council room. Uh, I, this has to be troubleshooted, troubleshot. IT has to get in there and prove that it works and that the, the text is in the right direction and all that should be done before we come. That's all I have to say. I thought I had participated via Zoom when I had COVID. I heard you and you heard us. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, was that Zoom or WebEx? Zoom. That was, that was Zoom. Everything I, at John's office like, oh, went sorry. back to in-person has been Zoom. Okay. So and it both has meetings worked, are, it just didn't work last time. Yeah. Both meetings I chaired with you, Kathy, when, when uh, Sheila was the out. Budget meetings, both worked. budget meetings were, were yep. fine. Right, yep. uh, right. Okay. It was a glitch, right. All right. So I'll email Fernando tomorrow and see if we can find out if he had pinpointed anything uh, because he tried. He tried like heck. Yeah. I know he did. I was getting embarrassed at how often I was asked to, ch to check in with folks. Yeah. But right. yeah. School committee has gone through it a couple times too, I've noticed, you know, their Zoom. So it, 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 it just glitches once in a while, but we have been successful. So I just want us to be careful. Like I said, I'm not doing it to rush, but it's not like it's something that happens to us all the time. That was a glitch. All right, Jenny, did you have a final thought on this yes. one? Yes, I know it was a glitch, um, but I just think it was, it might be a good idea to be prepared and to agree ahead of time. If would someone be allowed to vote with a, a show of hands because they are there? Not if I can't I mean, I, I think that that was an important issue on whether or not somebody could vote. I would have to, um, I can reach out to open meeting law and find out if if it, it occurs again, um, if the counselors that can clearly be seen that are attending remotely by the raise of hands, show of thumb, however, you know, you want to do it, if they could vote that way. But I will check with That's open meeting point. law. Thank, Thank you. you Kathy. All right, next we have rotation of counselors to assist the clerk. I think we've worked that out for July. So Jenny, did you wanna just go ahead and skip this one? Yes, it's fine. And thank you, Phil, for stepping forward. Okay, and then next, uh, Mike Taranzo is going to be assisting the fire department. Um, in their uh, collective bargaining agreement, they're supposed to set up a safety staffing committee um so he's going to represent the city council on that there's also i think someone from the mayor's office and some firefighters oh so he's going to help us there that's good um discussion on equity oh this was the um okay so this is more about me asking for volunteers we've been getting a number of emails about um they're calling it equity theft in our emails and We've gotten lots of them. I didn't know if there was a counselor who wanted to take that up and do some more research and sort of like shepherd that through. Um, since we've been getting so many, I certainly don't have the bandwidth myself, but I wanted to at least put it on the agenda because everything else that people have emailed me about, I always at least put it on the agenda. Um, yeah, this is just more about the state and not the city. Um, this. Well, no, it's the, the city opts in. So right. perhaps so nobody here wants so, so so perhaps so perhaps because um this is this is really about tax title. Um it really is. So perhaps it's important maybe maybe ways and means can take it up. Does that seem okay. appropriate? 
I, I would be fine with that. I just know that we've had a number of residents write to us. I don't want to ignore folks, but I know that I personally don't have a lot of extra time to take on a project that I know very little about. But yeah, if Ways and Means could have a discussion about this and then come to a, a, a good conclusion that you know works for the city, um, I think that would be wonderful. Um, if unless I unless somebody else wants to, I see Dan's hand up. Would Dan the Dan's committee like <laughs> to do it? <laughs> All right, go ahead, Dan. Um, no, um, I would just like to say I would be happy to help you, Chris, because as the whole world learned, I have a definite knowledge of a tax title in the city because, uh, you know, not all of us made the front page. So um, if, uh, if I can help, I would be more than happy to because I, I lived it and I danced the dance. So um, I'm there for you. Okay. So why don't we just, we'll, why don't we put that on uh, Ways and Means agenda for an introduction in July? I'm sure it's gonna take a number of meetings before we're able to come back with any kind of thoughts. This is gonna be complicated. All right. It's okay. very complicated. Yeah. All right, thank you. And then uh, speaking of complicated, uh, Dan, <laughs> this one is yours, the uh, seven, seven uh, and seven, eight. Um, I would like this, this will be ready for August. It won't be ready for July. Um, I have been working um, to put together a ad hoc based committee to work on this project out of uh, A&O in conjunction with the executive side of the government and um, some public pieces. And we're very close and it'll be ready for August. Uh, so the announcement will be ready by then and and what we're doing but um that'll work we'll be ready for august to come forward with which i think is a project that will have the solution we're looking for good oh perfect thank you okay next i have a uh, police audit and community engagement submitted by councillor bullock um she is here at this meeting and she can explain this better than i can so I'm gonna let her explain her, her idea that she's putting forward. Thank you, President Gilmore. Um, so basically the idea is to proposing to fund a task force that would create um, a process for robust community engagement um, through the auditing process. So um, I spoke with some colleagues that I was working with in Austin, Texas on another project that um, the project I'm working on with them came out of a, a reimagining public safety task force that they had implemented um, after some horrific incidents of police violence and misconduct in their city. Um, and one of the recommendations was the project that I've been working on with them in my day job. But I, I met with a couple members of the task force they also similarly paid for an audit um, by a you know evaluation and research uh, uh, group, and um, this task force had tried to align alongside this the audit and be funded as well, but wasn't. So what they did was they ended up creating a, a shadow report. Um, and they referred me to Oakland, California, where I spoke with some folks from Oakland who did the same thing, who had an audit by the city for some issues within the police department. They had a city community led task force that was funded by the city of Oakland, um, and they came out with a joint report at the end of it. Um, so the idea that I, I did meet with um, with the mayor and with the chief of staff on last Monday um and i propose this idea to her that we create a city community led task force that would meet regularly um you know the task force would be sort of a a a group that's um appointed uh and made up of varying folks throughout the community that's like you know some city councilors some people with public safety knowledge um, a certain number of residents, people who've been impacted by policing and criminal justice, some social service agencies. 
Um, and they would be tasked with co-creating a framework for um, for public safety alongside the audit process and, and co-creating that report. So some of this would have to be written into the RFP um, that would that would go out. Um, and the I think the big piece for me is that this would this would need to be funded. So the folks that are not um, that are not city employees, that are not city officials, uh, that aren't working for social service agencies, that sort of thing would be stipended to do this work over an 18 month period. Um, they would help uh, conduct sort of deeper engagement within the community because these auditors are going to come in. They're not going to know Greenfield. Many of them have worked in many communities, but are we, we're like a rural city. <laughs> um, we have a really different issues than Oakland or, or uh, Albany or other places where some of the, where some of these auditors have been before. Um, and so the city community task force would really, be our greenfield experts that would work alongside the auditors uh, to identify and create um, more preventative measures that would be long term in our in our community. Um, so that my idea, this is all just ideas, is it would be 18 months of working alongside the auditors writing a report, and then there would be an implementation phase. So when the auditors leave and we have their report, our task force would stay for some number of time and maybe it would be reconfigured at that point um, with new members and a new a new structure potentially depending on what recommendations look like from both both the auditors and the task force. Um, but then there would be an implementation phase. And um, I think long term when I talk to folks in Austin, in Oakland, um, when I talk to some folks in Northampton, they just developed a new Department of Community Care there. Um, on ideas on what they're doing, this could potentially be the seed to developing a more longer term, um, a, a more longer term preventative department within Greenfield. But that's sort of bigger visioning for the future. Thank you. So I'm trying to figure out where this would fit for right now. There will eventually be a funding piece and it would go to ways and means at that point, but without the funding, I'm wondering if it's more CRE right now. Mary, I'm you're on CRE? I'm not, I'm, I'm on, I'm not on economic development and um, okay. appointments and ordinances. I don't know. I, well, I feel like this is CRE stuff. Well, oh, Chris, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I agree with you, um, Sheila, that there are two pieces to this. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe we're going to take up the request for the money for the audit. Ways and Means will take that up. Um, and there'll be a recommendation coming out to Council Floor on that. Um, I would say to Marianne, it's a really, really important um, if there is a subsequent request for money that it come into come into play sometime before we vote on this. Um, so that that's just an aside, but I do agree with you. I think the other piece is community relations, definitely. Okay, so we'll put it on CRE for now because we don't know um, if the mayor is going to choose to fund this or not and how that's going to look. So until we have that. But thank you. Um, I think that's a great idea. Thank you, Marianne. Great thinking. Oh, it is. It's, it's great. People want it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next thing I have on the agenda is um, a withdrawal of proposed amendments except um, Anno has already taken this up. So it feels like a moot point to me. I agree. Okay. I don't think, it, I don't, I don't, it's, it's not relevant to anything we have to do. We've, we're done with that at a &O. Uh, We've gone through it. There's nothing to withdraw because we've already refined, voted where we have recommendations ready to roll. We're good. Okay, thank you. Um, mayor's appointments will go to ANO, so that's um, 
CPC, Planning and Construction, Planning Board, Sustainable Greenfield Implement, Implement, Implementation Committee. <laughs> All right. Yep. Okay. All right. EDC, uh, July 12th, 6 o'clock, um, amend zoning, section 200-6.7, signs zoning ordinance, transfer and authorized sale of city-owned land on Summer Street, joint public hearing with the planning board, and that should be, oh, and then parking and bike lane is a discussion item. Does that sound right? Uh, yes, uh, just as everybody probably knows, we're gonna, we're likely gonna table the moratorium and go straight to the tier one thing. Um, also, I, I should add that we, we already had a public hearing uh, on the, uh, the signs and, and we looked at the summer, summer street thing. Uh, both of those got positive recommendations. Good. All right. Then I have ANO on July 13th, um, mayor's appointments. And then the discussion items are establishment of a code of ethics for the city of Greenfield proposed amendments to chapter 7-7, which, so that's coming off until August, correct? Right. Correct. Um, okay, we're gonna uh, take that off until August. Yep, there's just some details I'm working out with the clerk's office and the executive side and we'll be ready. Okay. And then update on former Councilor Wheeler's proposed ordinance to prohibit unlawful compression. Is that, is that being discussed this month? Is there a development there? There, there isn't, but what, you know, we're, you know, there's not a lot to talk about on the code of ethics either, because um, we just haven't brought that back up. So we got hit with so much other stuff that, you know, our own code of ethics kind of got uh, put on a back burner. Uh, but both Marianne and I that agreed to work on it together, I, I'm, I'm sure it's something we still want to work on, but I don't know if we have anything to talk about on all of those discussion items. Um, the code of ethics, I don't think is ready for any discussion yet. Um, proposed 7-7 seven, seven, uh, won't come up in July. And then um, Councilor Wheeler, let's leave that on discussion. I will call, uh, once again, where we got stuck on that in A&O was the piece. No one knew how it would be enforced and no one knew how it could be scaled, literally, because uh, it has to do with weights and road access and all of those things. And so it takes Marlowe and it takes police. Uh, I'll have to talk to Chief Gordon and just um, see if they have input, but maybe I can do that before next week and um, at least get an update. So that can stay. Okay. So you might have a relatively short meeting. I believe so, it's it been a while. Yeah. Um, the only light item being left on discussion for July is the prohibiting unmuffled compression relief and in break, correct? Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to leave that for an update. Okay. Thank so, you. Are, so you're still meeting in July and doing yes, that? Yes, because we item? have mayoral appointments. Oh, okay. It'll be like a very, you know, to the point meeting, yeah. Penny. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Siri. All right. We've got the housing and Greenfield topic. And then we had just moved to the one about um, Councillor Bullock's um, proposal. So what I think is that's the it housing for... exactly? Um, you okay. might want to talk to Councillor Bottomley to get a more thorough update, but I know that there were some folks that were working on affordable housing in Greenfield that wanted to come and talk to the committee about how the city council could help them move forward. I don't have all of the details, but I know that they had been talking to him and it, it kept getting put off because CRE kept falling on Monday holidays or it would fall at a time when he had to travel for work. Um, okay, so um, right now, Let's just leave it there. I'll check in with him by email tonight. And if he's maybe gonna be out of town that day, then I will let you and the clerk know as soon as possible and we'll just do it in August. Okay, that sounds good. All right, perfect. All right, Ways and Means, July 19th. 
remote or in person perhaps. perhaps. Um, okay, 175,000 from stabilization for the assessment slash audit. And then discussion items, financial activity involving the lump property, review of city of Greenfield's budget process, and police audit. Oh, also the, um, what was the other one? I'm sorry, the equity, equity uh, theft. Yep, that would be fine. Okay. All right, Kathy, if you wanna give us your report. Sure. Uh, so I mentioned about the extension of the in-person uh, virtual meetings. We have no update, but if July 15th hits and we haven't heard anything, then on July 16th, everything has to be in person. But we will definitely let you know as soon as we hear anything. Um, the new, the Votes Act, Chapter 92 of the Act of 2022 was voted uh, about a week and a half ago. Part of that requires the city council to, um, well, this is, this is what the, the memo said from elections. Effective immediately, the law regarding assignment of police officers at polling places is amended to require the board of selectmen, town council, or city council to assign police officers and constables to polling places. Previously, this was the responsibility of the police chief. Um, so I don't have any guidance on this other than what I just read to you. Um, I sent an email to Dan and Sheila, uh, the police chief, the mayor, that sort of thing. So I'm going to be asking, and it may be on July when I'm not there, but it may also be on August, that... Uh, the council consider um, retaining a number of officers up to two, but more than likely one for both the September and November elections and authorize the city clerk in coordination with the police chief or a police department designee to assign officers to those elections. So until I get more guidance, that's the best I can do this was part of the law that I didn't really know was coming forward. Um, and now it's part of the law, so it has to be done. Right. So do you understand the rationale for the change? Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, previously I sent an email to police chief saying we need police officers on this date at these times. They showed up, we were done. Okay, so maybe I have to write the email and then you forward it to the police chief and then I don't know. <laughs> I I can I can do that. I'm jo I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, I, I I have no idea why they did this, but they did. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe I'm just gonna have to look into this and figure out what because it's it seems like a really strange change to me. But yeah. Um I can send an email to elections and ask them for more advice. So I've been communicating with another local Western Mass clerk who has a city council and we, you know, we've been going back and forth. So we only have two meetings before the September election um, and we can't afford to wait on this, but of course, it, it's not of importance to many people. Um, so it, it's not, you know, maybe I can send a, a, an email to elections and get a little bit more information, but this was just kind of like, hmm, interesting. Yeah, that seems strange. I'll see what I can find out too, as far okay. as like rationale, but. Yeah. Um, so one other thing before I get done. So if you come into the clerk's office this month or next month, you're going to see a little bit of reconfiguration going on. Um, the clerk's office by the end of July will have these two administrative assistants sitting out in the office available to the public. Um, and we are, Geneva and I will be 
moving in back in the other offices so that we can um, have more space, more time to, we'll have a little meeting space. So when you come in, there'll be a table that we can sit at. Geneva and I will be in the old clerk's office. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that things are gonna look a little bit different. They look kind of like we're in the midst of moving at the moment. Um, so I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Okay, thank you. All right. So the draft agenda for this month, we've got pay for that invoice. Okay, that was tabled from last month because we didn't have enough folks there. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't tabled. It was by consensus agreed upon. Oh, okay, Sorry. thank you. But yes, it was leftover from last month. Yes. So that's nothing new. We just didn't have enough folks there. Um, then, okay, so the 175 for the independent assessment slash audits, that looks good. Transfer and authorize city owned land. Amend zoning, 200-6.7 uh, signs of the zoning ordinance, then mayor's appointments, and then proposed amendments to the rules of procedure. <clears throat> I think that I think that looks good in the order that yep. it's in. Chris has something. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I was looking at the agenda. Uh, no, no, that's okay. Uh, I was too. So I wanted to know um, what will happen with the marijuana zoning piece that comes out of EDC? Phil? Um, anybody? Yeah. The, let me just get back to Zoom. Uh, we're we're going to have a public hearing and we'll hear the public again. This will be like the third or fourth time. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna ask people not to repeat things that some others have said. And then I, I, my sense of the committee is that we'll be forwarding a positive recommendation on the tier return to tier one, and we will uh, postpone or table or something the moratorium. It's not clear that we need a moratorium once we have the tier one restored. Uh, we'll have the, the planning board will have time to uh, if they think they can make <clears throat> they may want to make um, uh, fine tune uh, the zoning change but they'll have time to do that okay so EDC is on the 12th I, let me look at the dates real quick is EDC before yes it's before the oh. city council meeting. okay yes the week before okay does it make sense to have that on July as a placeholder then in case we're ready to vote on it? Oh, Kathy, please tell me so what I'm doing wrong. The planning board has 21 days after the public hearing closes to forward a recommendation. Okay, okay. So it should be on the August agenda. Uh, yes. Is there a reason it can't be on July? So the council cannot vote until the planning board sends a recommendation or okay. 21 days has to pass. Right. So for that 21 mm -hmm. days, it's kind of, the, the breaks are put on. Um, if the planning board forwards a recommendation before the 21 days is up, before 48 hours that the council needs to post the agenda, then it theoretically could go on July, but the planets need to align <laughs> uh, for those things to happen sometimes. Um, so the, the safest spot would be August, but that right. doesn't completely exclude July. So can, can we keep it on the agenda for July? Just for the council meeting? Yeah. You know, I think I'd be fine with that because if they do come back with, in five days with a recommendation, it would be nice to get um, to get to it in July. And if it's not ready for showtime, then we'll just skip over that part and we'll, you know, we'll adjourn. If that's what you'd like. Yeah, let's it's, just put it on there. Just cover our bases. Can, can either the, um, the EDC or the planning board, um, after the public hearing is closed, 
can both vote well, if they um, choose to. Go ahead, Phil. My understanding is that the city council doesn't need the planning board's uh, approval to to uh, to to approve the the ordinance. Uh, but I may be wrong. <laughs> yeah, Kathy, school us. Um, so the law states that the planning board has 21 days to respond, and they within that time. The council needs to wait for that response. After okay. the 21st day, the council can do whatever they want. Um, the council doesn't need to take the planning board's recommendation. You know, the, the council can, again, pass something without the planning board thumbs up. Um, it, 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 can, it can be done. I don't know if the planning board is looking to vote to get it on the council agenda for July. They tend to take their time, which is not a bad thing in all situations. Okay. Yeah, that's fine if they want to if they want to take the full 21 days, that's fine, but I would feel better having it on the agenda. That way, if for some reason, because like Phil said, we've heard from the public for a long time on this now. Mm -hmm. So Maybe they feel comfortable voting right away. So, and then we're we're not the ones hanging it up. Right. So we'll have would it on there. Like it, would you like it on the agenda to come after the other zoning amendment, but before the appointment? Yeah, that would be good. Okay. All right, Penny, your hand was up. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say that. Um, just make sure you use your resource. You have um, Councilor Desorger here, and. She was on planning board for a number planning of years. Planning board expertise. So, so that, that's all, she's also, you know, in the loop and could even maybe reach out to them and tell them that we might do it in July. I'm just saying, but just remember that has all that knowledge right there. She has all that knowledge. Yeah. And she's on EDC too. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. Let's call this baby. <laughs> So everything looks good to me. Yep. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to adjourn at six fifty-eight. Have a great oh night. I'll see you soon. Thank you, everybody. Out of here. Bye bye. bye.